Hi guys, Adrian here, the Porsche lover. For today, I'm going to show you my new facelifted Porsche Boxster 97. As usual, we will start with a wristwatch check. So my wrist today is a very interesting watch, which is currently unknown from a good friend of mine. So all my wrist today is a over. This is actually the reference number 103.08 which is the Titanium Aluminium Nitrate version or TIARN for short. I know it's a huge mouthful and everything but later I'll explain to you what does this all mean. So a bit of background history. So Avert is a pretty cool company where they actually make a lot of cool complications and watches. They are also an independent watchmaker which is not associated with any big brands and at the same time they are all made in-house. So this watch, as I said earlier, comes with the titanium aluminium nitrate coating. So this coating actually makes the watch very, very hard. So on the weakest scale rating, it's actually very close to the suppliers. At the same time, this uh, coating also gives it a very, very special color itself because it's a bit uh, copperish, it's a bit purplish, a bit brownish, depending on the sunlight and depends on the lighting itself. What is so cool about this watch is actually the front on how you tell the time. So this watch actually comes with a revolving satellite complication with wandering hours. So what does the gibberish all means? So you can see the hours, it should actually print on the disc itself and this disc actually rotates later, I'll show you in a short while. So you can see right now, the time is actually five then when it touches the scale at the bottom here, it's actually the minute. So it's currently 5.46 p.m. Of course, it's not uh, morning right now, it's evening. So it's either morning or evening. So 5.46 in this case. This watch actually comes with a manual winding movement with a bull head style crown on top here. So how do you set the time, you might ask. So I do say pro the crown on top here and you twist the lever on top here, the crown. So you can see actually it's moving here. So it's 5.50 right now. It's going to 5.60, which is 6 p.m. So when 6 p.m., you can see the 6 actually comes in here to play already. So as usual, you will move around 6 p.m., 6.05, 6.10. So this is how you tell the time for the Overbook 103.08. Flipping the watch towards its case back, you can see there's some very cool features here as well. So the first thing you'll notice right off the bat will be the black DLC coated titanium case back, which you can see all over here, which is a very smooth finishing. And this is of course you can see number 87 as well. So another cool feature will be the power reserve meter here. So as you wind this manual wind watch, you can see the power reserve is actually increasing. So up to the max and you can see how much power reserve it has. At the same time, let's say if you want more uh, minute um, detail, uh, way to set the watch, you can actually you can see here. So you can see this is actually the 15 minutes. So you can actually set it to very precise over here. And same time here is actually the second. Second is actually going up and down. So you can see exactly how well you set it. And the last cool feature of the watch is actually this item here. This is actually the fine tuning screw where you can actually tune the thing to plus minus 30 seconds in the day itself. Very, very cool. All right, back to the topic at hand. If you are new to the channel, in this channel I will talk about a lot of Porsches, my passion for Porsches, mostly on technical matters, on car matters, and of course, as you saw earlier, about watches. If you like it, please give me a like button and subscribe to the channel. Alrighty, so now is the main moment where I actually unveil my new facelifted Porsche Boxster 97. So here we go, drum roll please. As you can see, this is actually inspired by the Porsche 911 Speedster, more specifically the 991 generation Speedsters with the Heritage Edition option. So, as you might know from my previous uh, Porsche, the 911, my Golf, also is also inspired by the Porsche 911 Speedster, the um, Heritage Edition, where I actually took a twist on it, where instead of putting a silver and white, I actually put it in blue and orange. So for this round, I want to do something similar to this car as well. So the reason why this came about was because actually the bumper was like damaged, where actually the previous owner actually had some scuff marks damaged it. At the same time, so there was a lot of stone chip. So I was thinking, trying to refresh the car. So silver was a bit plain old boring, so I wanted to spice it up a bit. So I thought, okay, why not? Let's say if I were to reimagine, if Porsche actually had the option for the Porsche 911 uh, Boxster back in 2005 and they launched, to have a heritage edition, how would it be? So my goal for this car to, was to make it as OEM++ as possible. That means it's as if Porsche were created this from the factory. So I took some time to study the lines on how it would curve because if you follow the actual Porsche 991, the white stripes along the headlights are actually more curved. So I didn't want that because I thought that it wouldn't look good on the uh, Porsche 97 lines. So I actually um, designed it a bit differently where I actually put the curve of the lines uh, closer to the headlights itself instead of coming out. So I think this actually looks very well for the car itself and suits the shape of the headlights and the car itself. 
Another consideration that I had before I wanted to get the Spitzer look was that should I wrap the car or should I paint the car? So speaking of paint, let me just uh, share with you some info. The 911 Speedster actually comes in GT Silver as in this Boxster 97 that you see behind me is actually uh, Arctic Silver. So the Arctic Silver is actually a lighter shade of, of silver compared to the more greyish uh, GT Silver. However, I think that it looks just fine for me so I didn't want to spend extra money to repaint it to GT Silver. I just don't want to do the front end because it was the bumper that was actually stone chip and damaged. So back to the topic, whether should I wrap or paint the car? So I was given this dilemma for the longest time because uh, I like the wrap because previously my car, when I go for drives, there are a lot of stone chips and everything. So the wrap actually is a thicker material and it prevents stone chip from hitting it. However, the wrap is not very nice to look at. It's not pleasing at all. I mean, you don't get the reflection of it. That means you don't have the glassy look where paint gives you. I mean, from far away, yes, you take a photo, maybe from about uh, five meters, 10 meters away, it looks great. But however, when you go closer, you can see that it's just not paint itself. I mean, initially I was all right with it, but after looking at a lot of cars and over time, I actually long back for the shiny material of paint on it. So for this car, I actually decided to paint the bumpers instead and also I was thinking mm, okay maybe I should give it a better quality uh, clear coat because why to prevent the stone chip so in this case I actually went for the glossarite uh, clear coat paint as well besides the white bumper and also the white eyelids or the white eye stripes on the headlights itself I also actually did a few more items to spice up the car itself so first off like as you can see the A pillar is actually painted matte black so some people might not notice but actually the speedster the A pillar is actually matte black so I did that also to emulate the look so that it looks, looks slicker because when it's matte black it, it seems that as if the roof angle has a slightly more sharper angle more rake angle so it looks a little more sporty than it actually is and then lastly what I did was actually to actually replace the mesh as well because the mesh of this car originally that I replaced with uh, was a bit non-shiny material and it was getting a bit old already so what I did was they actually recently sourced for a more shiny net mesh uh, initially you might not think it's a big difference but once you put it on it actually transformed the look of the car to make it more beautiful so it's the little little things the details that very subtle things that actually make the Porsche stand out or look good if you like this video so far, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It will be highly appreciated. Alright, so actually, uh, the last thing wasn't the mesh. One more thing to complete the special look was that I actually added the side decal strips. That was actually added about a few months back ago to make it look more speedster like One more thing I actually missed out, I haven't, I haven't put on it, is actually the Mobile Pegasus sticker, which is actually my favourite because I think that if you are a silver Porsche, it definitely has to have a Mobile Pegasus sticker on the sides of the car itself in red, of course. So yeah, so that I actually ordered already. I'm waiting for it to arrive. So that's the only last thing to complete this Spitster look for now. To end this video off, I'd like to give my Boxster a name, which is very really surprising because I actually named my 997, but I haven't named this car yet. I mean, even though I've been driving her for about six months already. So her name now will be Speedy. Of course, inspired by Speedster, short form Speedy. So uh, coming to mind as well, it's actually, uh, I'm thinking of the Omega Speedmaster Omega Speedy, which is another watch that I would love to own in the future as it's one of the most iconic watches. All right, so that's all for today. If you have any comments, uh, please leave it in the uh, comment section down below, whether you like the new look or you don't like the new look. At the same time, uh, stay safe and God bless.